Hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us here today. Uh, here we have Daniel O for our first session, who will speak about hybrid server development using Quarkus. Now, this is a pre-recorded session, and uh, we will post a YouTube link in the track chat, just in case there are issues with the platform. So you can still watch the video and then come back for the live Q&A session. And if you have any questions, you can post them in the track chat and we will try to answer as many of those questions as we can. All set? Cool. All right, I'll share the video then. The practical example, technical oh. tips and uh, application development demo. Just feel free to enjoy that watch it that things. All right, move on. So in order to understand why we needed the Quarkus in Java to develop a hybrid serverless application department, uh, just take a look at that, uh, where it came from, and then... Uh, uh, welcome to join hybrid serverless department using Quarkus session. So my name is Daniel O. I'm working for Red Hat as a technical marketing major. Uh, I'm specialized in cloud native app dev and as I in DevOps practice uh, with the uh, loss of red technology and open source project. I'm also responsible for CNCF ambassador as well as the DevOps Institute ambassador in order to evangelize a lot of uh, cloud native architecture and practice and application reference with many enterprise developers and also IT operation. I recently published uh, practical answer will, uh, give some guidelines how to automate the uh, IT operation team's task and also developer activity uh, for their daily work. So just feel free to uh, follow my Twitter and subscribe my YouTube channel, Bini slash Daniel TV. There are lots of practical example, technical tips, and uh, application development demo. Just feel free to enjoy that, watch that things. All right, move on. So in order to understand why we needed the Quarkus in Java to develop a hybrid serverless application department, uh, just take a look at that, uh, where it came from, and then uh, Java, where Java came from here. So back in 1995, uh, Java was born, and then there were a lot of things uh, came up at the moment. And just a few uh, years later, in 1999, uh, there are perfect time to sell a software hardware by many vendors to build up and spin up your infrastructure and to run uh, the Java application on top of that. So for example, you, uh, we needed to uh, half a million to start with the infrastructure preparation. Also, we need to spend more than $80,000 for each year to maintain application server and web server and database, including hardware, infrastructure, CPU, memory, etc. In an architecture perspective, uh, there are one monolith application architecture, which includes all functionality in a single application artifact, also known as a WAR file and ER file. And then the architecture pre uh, uh, focus on uh, density, I mean, high density to how many applications can be running on uh, the number of application server with the scalability. It uh, doesn't matter the, the consumption of the number of the CPU memory and disk storage, et cetera, like a resource perspective. In the meantime, the IT trend and technology uh, kept evolving uh, from 1995 and recently and back in 2006, Amazon uh, is uh, served the first uh, public instance, like a virtual machine, which means that the startup company or even enterprise company really looking to uh, Amazon uh, provide a service uh, without uh, purchasing new infrastructure uh, software, uh, infrastructure hardware stuff. In the 2009, Java 6 was came up. There are a lot of big changes to develop. Uh, enterprise application quickly, easily, like uh, uh, EJB, Vim, etc. In uh, 2013, Docker container and the Kubernetes 2014 uh, came up to change the world 
uh, the people totally move forward to a uh, new immutable infrastructure to run your Microsoft application and cloud native application. <clears throat> So according to new technology and uh, IT trend, so in the infrastructure layer also change that, which means uh, enterprise does need to uh, purchase a new hardware to run your business application with Java, but also but instead they just uh, consume and use a uh, public instance like uh, Amazon, like a uh, Google, Microsoft, and then they just need to pay as the amount of the resource consumption, just like a pay as you go policy. And then this is the reason why uh, more and more enterprise company looking for the uh, resource management with a small memory buffering and a fast start of time. You know, if you don't need it to your application, they should be terminated uh, automatically, which means you uh, reduce your cost at the end. But with this arch, uh, uh, with this uh, the change uh, IT technology, and uh, let's take a look at that uh, the Java uh, architecture perspective. So we have we've got the Microsoft architecture with a twelve factor, which means you can run your application functionality with a single application package, and uh, you uh, have a short time to change your application, like uh, from months to days, and the small memory pep memory buffering like a hundred megabyte and a start of just a couple of a second to start like a spring with the application. The problem is the center piece of this architecture still Java has dynamic uh, behavior and then uh, you can run it on JVM. This is not a, uh, this is not a, a perfect uh, architecture to optimize uh, immutable architecture like a Kubernetes and Linux container. There's no change at all. The reason why let's uh, the reason why the uh, the design perspective of Java. So Java is designed for high buffering, running on uh, your application. There's no stop, no terminate, except for uh, some hardware or software upgrade or patch or bug fix, and which means your application uh, should be running on all the time, like a twenty four seven, even if the application uh, doesn't need it to serve all the time. So memory buffering, which means you need to spend lots of money to uh, uh, have that kind of buffering, like a uh, like a heavy resource management, like a CPU memory. You need to spend a lot of money to do that. And also the desire to be long learning uh, process, and twenty four seven, and no exception to that, and scalability, no scalability, but a little bit more scale up and the uh, high scalability. It's also uh, uh, have, uh, much expense of startup speed. Sometimes you need to spend about five minutes to start your application. Maybe that can be happen uh, uh, once a month or once a six months, doesn't matter. But now we change it to microservice application and cloud native application uh, architecture and the technology stack. You could deploy application feature and bug fix or improvement, improvement and enhancement every single day or even 10 times uh, uh, maybe uh, per day. So startup time and road learning process is the, uh, the good benefit or feature of this era. And one more thing, uh, Java was really great uh, for the back in decades ago for with the uh, rich dynamic behavior for mutable system. You can uh, package your immediate uh, file, uh, also known as bytecode, and then you can run that bytecode to any application server across a web architecture, like a worldwide web and a web browser and et cetera. But this is not particularly matched to immutable infrastructure like a container, Linux container technology and Kubernetes. So just imagine that you have one same application and one time packaging, but you need to deploy thousand times on your cluster and the Kubernetes or even uh, publicly uh, managing this uh, platform. Same application, high scalability and high performance and you need to start off fastly in a small memory for free. There's another uh, requirement feature uh, to run immutable infrastructure. 
So it's a Java with a container technology. Uh, it's not good enough uh, to meet the developer and IT operation team requirement. This, that's the reason why Node.js and Go is a more good high density in the same uh, work node in the Kubernetes cluster. So let's take a look at that. Uh, the Java with the last of using hip memory, but Node.js Go is maybe twice in a, a triple time a high density uh, rather than Java application with the same resource capacity. Another reason why uh, more people move to uh, develop a Node.js a Python uh, to implement uh, of the uh, serverless application and function on top of the Amazon Lambda. This is a recent survey from uh, the serverless benchmark report, Amazon Lambda 2020. So more than 50% uh, is Node.js is a popular language framework and um, the platform to uh, develop your serverless application. And also, uh, 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 as the serverless landscape standpoint, there are a lot of two framework and platform as a manageable or managed platform. So the big concern from developer and uh, operation team, like a DevOps team, uh, how to uh, find out the appropriate tools framework. For example, there are more than seven to 10 million Java developer to develop uh, enterprise application from existing one and new Microsoft's application with the Java technology uh, out there. And then they needed to optimize the existing Java application to deploy a fast uh, platform or a serverless platform. In order to do that, they need to own tool and they need to make a choice which tool should be perfect for their uh, Java technology. So as a result, it's too many choices. But Java uh, has tried to uh, improve itself, uh, like uh, try to fit in uh, more Linux container technology uh, in terms of the memory utilization and CPU utilization. Also, there are new uh, garbage correct algorithm like a Shannon Doha, and then there are new uh, process uh, uh, compiler for like a Darby for Android operation. There are lots of the huge effort to enhance Java technology to fit in the new IT sub, uh, trend, like a immutable infrastructure in the Linux container and the microservices and, uh, and it's a uh, public cloud, etc. But still, that's not good enough. So that's why we needed something different with the Java. So Quarkus unleashed up in the world just one year ago, and the Quarkus is a little bit more focused on enable Java developer to develop cloud every application and microservices and serverless with the event driven architecture as well as the traditional microservice architecture. So Quarkus uh, really focused on uh, optimizing the, the center part. So microservices serverless and uh, just start a millisecond with the native comparison and then just so under uh, less than 10 memory footprint, like a 30 time rest than or even 100 time rest than memory footprint uh, compared to existing uh, cl uh, cloud level Java stack. And you can also uh, have a two different runtime, like a JVM, also GraalVM. So how does the framework start uh, in the meantime? So Java application in a build time, they needed to create the bytecode comparison, also known as the uh, the, the the immediate code and then uh, intermediate code and a packaging using the, some tool like a Maven, Gradle. And uh, there are uh, spend a lot of time uh, in this step, the build application for developer. And then what happened when you run that application on your production environment, even your local machine, the first local uh, try to load uh, your configuration file and enable, disable some feature and also try to parse annotation and processing descriptor and uh, the build framework meta model and proxy, etc. In the end, you're gonna start the actual application with a thread and pool. So from one to five step, uh, it's not related to actual application startup. So how does Quarkus change that? Uh, and uh, so Quarkus uh, makes a thin job rather than uh, uh, the fetcher. And then 
And also you can uh, have a native comparison feature with the parkers, which means that you print the all uh, necessary task. Uh, you can do that at boot time rather than runtime. So take a look at the right side of the runtime. You just need to start your application actually. So just like it's a cartoon, wait. So you just save it and your code is running and it's still Java. Yeah, that's cool. It's a super summary Java. And that is Quarkus. So Quarkus enable comparison a little bit uh, narrow down. So first thing you need to compile to create a fed, uh, the thin jar and the provision is created. And then you can run the JDA hotspot runnable image. And also you can have enable comparison along with the, the ahead of time uh, strategy and the in the end you can have a uh, native executable file like a uh, the Go uh, program language platform and then you just run that application without JVM. So today I'm gonna showcase uh, Quark as a funky to develop a serverless application and you can write a function with the uh, standard portable Java API. So there are a lot of choices I already mentioned earlier. So you can develop Java, and uh, but you need to change some configuration, even some annotation to deploy specific uh, serverless or fast platform. Uh, so this is a really big burden for developers. So they are maybe uh, really prefer to some specific uh, serverless platform like a, a Knet with the Kubernetes or Amazon Lambda or Google Function or Azure Function or uh, any other uh, 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 serverless platform. So Quarkus uh, allows the Java developer to have a portable uh, Java API uh, that can be deployable at any uh, serverless and fast platform. This is a new strategy of the Quarkus application framework. So you can you can see here the you can just deploy Quarkus uh, application with a funky uh, using HTTP protocol and also uh, deploy Amazon Lambda and uh, uh, Amazon Lambda and the KNAV event and also uh, HTTP with the edge of function and the Google Cloud platform. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about in the demo. All right, let's uh, jump in the demo. How Corpus uh, help a developer to uh, write the function uh, for multiple uh, serverless platform, including on prem Let's get sorry. Okay, let's create a new application project using Quarkus tool on ID two. And first of all, we're gonna add the project group ID and artifact ID, and I'm gonna leave the others by default and uh, just generate the application code and this on my temp directory. And let's take a look at that, uh, the generated uh, uh, application code here. So this is a RESTful API, just endpoint, Hello and a return hello, very simple application. Let's try to make sure this application uh, works properly. And I just run the Maven command line and Quarkus dev mode. And uh, it takes a couple of seconds to start up your Quarkus application here. Uh, let's take a look at that. You have a CDI and a REST EG by default. And Quarkus provide a wonderful uh, functionality to develop Microsoft's application here. And when you end, uh, access the hello endpoint, you got the hello return code. And let's try to uh, add another endpoint as your function here. In order to do that, we're gonna add a new CDI bin here. Uh, the name is a greater service class name. And now uh, we're gonna uh, define new method. The name is a greeting. Uh, we uh, have some one parameter, like a name. And then return uh, the text message, uh, such as a welcome uh, with the dead name uh, as a parameter and then uh, for hybrid serverless development uh, with, you, with the Quarkus. It's just a simple uh, text message uh, with the uh, parameter name. And it's a simple, just the CDI pins. All right, uh, I think it looks good. And go back to resource file here and uh, inject uh, the CDI bin using inject annotation and the greeter grid service here, the name instance name is service and then just copy existing uh, endpoint, and then we're gonna uh, just try to tweak uh, whatever we need. So path 
annotation, uh, try to uh, have a new endpoint grouping and uh, with the parameter name. And this will be a new function method here. So, but in, but for to, uh, but for to do that, uh, we're gonna just implement a new Microsoft application endpoint using REST API uh, on Quarkus. And then uh, just invoke uh, greeter service uh, with the greeting uh, using parameter name. All right, looks good. And just try to access a new endpoint here. Uh, the hello dash greeting and the name, let's say Daniel. And the workers uh, automatically repackage and rebuild and restart your application automatically. This is a really fantastic for developer. Okay, that's really cool. So let's try to convert this application as a function. In order to do that, we're going to use a funky, uh, one of the, uh, the Quarkus extension. So just add a funky annotation here. And then, but you are Quarkus runtime still running on top of that. And, and then uh, we just use a uh, funky uh, annotation here. Once you use a funky annotation, you don't need to use the pass annotation any longer. And then the, the, the function name is a method name by default. But you can also define your specific function name, such as hybrid in this case. So, and you can still use uh, uh, the parameter and CDI beans here, and then we're going to delete unnecessary import here. The URL application code is pretty simpler uh, than uh, previous one. And then let's try to access the hello endpoint to invoke your function. So now you're gonna be hello the same result here. And then let's try to another function like a greeting as a possible method here and the parameter of Daniel O in this case. So HTTP and the post method and the, uh, we're gonna use the 8080 port and the endpoint is a Hybrid. Okay, so we got a lizard. Hello, Daniel O for hybrid server license development with a purpose. Pretty awesome. So you can uh, package this application, deploy uh, uh, Kubernetes native, uh, the K native server less. But, but for that, we're going to package this application as a native, native uh, executable file using native compilation. This is one of the uh, beauty of the purpose to packaging your application. Uh, to fit in a serverless platform or a fast platform because it's super fast, it's a small, uh, tiny memory buffering. It's a pretty effective way to manage your serverless application or function on top of the uh, Kubernetes cluster, even uh, manage the uh, fast or serverless platform. Uh, it takes normally a little bit longer than uh, uh, general uh, Maven packaging to create a thin jar because once you packaging thin jar and then you need to add all dependency uh, to create the executable file. And after that, you don't need to uh, execute this executable file on top of the JVM, but instead you just run this executable file on top of the VM. So this is the uh, using uh, I have the time strategy I already mentioned earlier in the slide stack. So this, you have a still two options to uh, deploy your uh, Quarkus application and Microsoft's application on top of the Quarkus using Finger or running on top of JVM, also executable file on Drive VM. All right, so run this application, just executable with that file, but uh, here is a, we just need a 34 milliseconds to start off. It's super awesome. Just imagine when you run this application as a function on top of a serverless platform, it's pretty awesome. And then let's try to deploy this application. I already packaging uh, the container image uh, like a Docker and also uh, push it into external registry. And in order to deploy this application, I'm gonna use the Office the Container Platform 4 and I create a new uh, sample project hybrid serverless and uh, I'm gonna uh, pull down external registry, uh, such as Daniel O and hybrid serverless and raise care. And then one thing you need to do is to select k service, which means OpenShift uh, deploy this application as serverless using uh, k uh, project. And then uh, the, the 
your application will be a uh, start. Oh, it's already start up. So you just need to seven uh, milliseconds to start up. And uh, just so you can uh, change the, uh, uh, the label, like uh, application apprenticeship IO runtime equal quarters, which means uh, you can uh, uh, you can show this part is based on quarters uh, compared to the other application part. All right, let's try to access the endpoint, like the first function endpoint, hello. Okay, uh, we have the same result as a local machine. And then the next, uh, the other function is greeting. But for that, I'm, uh, I'm going to readjust the, uh, the browser size uh, to show at the same time uh, to call endpoint here from my ID tool here. I'm going to uh, create a new terminal here and then just you know, using same HTTP uh, command line. But in, in this case, I'm going to use a route URL in Apache Container Platform. Just copy that from web browser and I'll paste it here. And now let's try to make sure endpoint hybrid here. And now let's try to wait uh, to uh, scale down to zero automatically as a part of the feature of the Apache Serverless Operator. And it will go down in a second. Uh, by default, the only second uh, will be scaled down to zero. Okay, it's uh, scaled down and I'll just invoke endpoint and uh, the pod is automatically start up and then uh, we got the same wizard, but it takes just a, uh, just a one or two seconds. That's why would the daily comparison is a really cool option to build and deploy your uh, Java application. All right, uh, next step is uh, let's try to deploy the same application different serverless platform uh, such as Amazon Lambda. All right, in order to do that, uh, uh, we're going to add another form key uh, extension here. So add a new extension and try to search in form key and here is a form key Amazon Lambda and there is a Google Cloud function as well. Well, in this case, we're going to use uh, Amazon Lambda uh, funky ex extension here. So once you add your extension here, and then uh, uh, we're gonna add uh, one appropriate file, uh, the Parker's funky export uh, uh, is a function name. So for example, hybrid. In order to deploy uh, to uh, Amazon Lambda, we're gonna deploy the one function at, a one, at one time. Let's try the packages application. Uh, I'm going to skip the uh, unit test because the unit test uh, uh, expect the return code hello. But we're going to change that uh, multiple endpoint at the moment. And then once you package your application and you go to target D3, there are generated some YAML file. Uh, you can run that thing on your local machine using SAM CRI. And also there are bash script to deploy your application uh, using uh, Amazon Lambda CLI to remote Amazon Lambda. Let's try to go to Amazon Management Console here. And we're going to use the IDM, the, the Amazon resource uh, name. And uh, I actually already created one row to deploy this function, uh, purpose and uh, application here. I just copy my airline row here and then just uh, go back to Amazon Lambda and then just make sure there's no function at this moment and then uh, just edit uh, edit that uh, RA, the Amazon low ARN name in a manage uh, bash script here. Just to uh, run this bash script uh, with the parameter create or delete. So in this case we're going to create uh, the uh, the new function uh, based on this uh, application uh, onto uh, Amazon Lambda here. It takes a, a couple of seconds to deploy your application. Okay, we got a, a successful uh, return code here. Let's go back to Amazon, uh, the web, con or the main console and reload. Okay, we got a, a new function here. Uh, let's try to test this application. And in order to that, we're gonna configure test event. Uh, let's say event name greeting and the parameter name, like a, a my name, uh, Dan O. In this case, and I created the test event and then invoke the test. Just uh, just expand the detail. Okay, welcome then all for hybrid serverless development with a purpose. It's the same result. And then 
let's try to uh, uh, delete this function. Once you uh, test and you don't need to use that function any longer, you just the same batch script, just delete, and your uh, function will be automatically deleted, which means you don't need to worry about the uh, billing. And uh, let's try to uh, call a different function like a hello, and we change that. But when we uh, repackage this application, the manage bash script will be generated once again, which means the RRN, the ARN name will be deleted we defined previously. So you can also uh, parameter that uh, low name uh, when you run the bash script here and then try to create once again to deploy this corpus application as a function on top of the Amazon Lambda. Okay, it takes a, a couple of seconds to deploy new function, hello, to Amazon Lambda. All right, uh, we just got successful message here. Go back to here and reload the page and uh, we got a, a new uh, function here. In our test to uh, the event name, let's say hello. And then uh, the parameter, there's no parameter, just the nothing parameter and it create that thing and uh, just click on uh, test. And the detail result and here is a hello, just like we did in a local environment. And also uh, there are more uh, Quarkus uh, extension with a funky here. Go to Quarkus.io and then click on guide and then search the funky. And you can find that uh, here's a funky HTTP application and uh, you can have a multiple extension to deploy uh, Quarkus application as a function. Use a funky extension here, Amazon Lambda and the Google Cloud function and Azure function using HTTP and also you can deploy a uh, focus application as a function using funky and knm event. You can integrate a uh, knm event like a backend, uh, post up, uh, top up message, etc. All right, let's go back to a uh, slide stack to recap. The Quarkus, uh, aka uh, Kubernetes native Java stack uh, that enables uh, Java developer to develop uh, Kubernetes native Java application. Uh, because Quarkus is a little bit more focused on container first technology, which means container uh, Quarkus optimized Java stack and uh, make it uh, very efficient for container and cloud and serverless with a tiny memory footprint consumption and super fast uh, startup time and response time. And also, usual, as you already saw, uh, Quarkus uh, provides a live cooling functionality, which means you don't need to uh, rebuild, packaging, restart your application runtime during the your change of the code. This is a really awesome for developer. In the end, this feature increases uh, developer productivity. And also uh, Quarkus uh, enables the developer to have imperative and reactive application at the same time uh, using different annotation. For example, you can add uh, inject for CDI bin or pass annotation to export the RESTful API, just like in part of a traditional Microsoft application development. But also, uh, you can add a streaming or uh, incoming, outgoming annotation to uh, interact the backend Kafka messaging server. And there are a lot of extension. You already saw funky extension, but also there are lots of extension uh, like here. Uh, but still, uh, the Quarkus is the uh, Java, which means you don't need to worry about the steep learning curve to catch up new technology to develop new Microsoft application or serverless application on top of the Quarkus. There are lots of extensions. You can easily add a new extension, such as a metrics like a Prometheus and a Jaeger and Kiari, and then there are a key clock and for single sign on and uh, micro profile, some uh, Java, Jakarta EE uh, capability, and there are more and more enterprise uh, and the open source community project uh, is uh, qualified uh, to use for developer. And one, uh, and the Quarkus X actually is part of a Red Hat runtime portfolio. So Red Hat runtime provide the, the 
Cloud Native Runtime, uh, such as Spring Boot and Node.js and BerkX and Perkus as well, with a fully support. So if you got some any, uh, if you're looking for the enterprise grade support, when you use Quarkus to run your application in production, uh, feel free to reach out to a Red Hat sales uh, representative to discuss uh, more details. So if you're really more interested about how to get started Quarkus application development on your local machine or even your enterprise companies, there are three uh, great resources here. The first one, the IDC uh, lab validation to compare the performance uh, with the, uh, the other cloud level Java stack, and also the interactive self service portal uh, training uh, website. Just go to bit.ly uh, slash try dash quarkers. There are lots of uh, practical scenario you can uh, go through uh, by yourself. And uh, once again, code quarkers .io is a, a starter. You can generate any uh, application from scratch and put into any extension to have your uh, application capability. All right, uh, thank you for uh, joining this uh, session. And then now, Kene, if you have any question and any uh, curiosity about the Quarkus and serverless, please uh, put on your request on the chat box and then I can ask that and have a good rest of the day. All right, uh, any question, uh, please, uh, please? Thank you, Daniel, for that talk. And yeah. uh, we will now take a few, uh, Daniel will now answer a few questions here. Yeah, sure, yeah, thanks for that, yeah. Oh, we cannot hear you, I think you're muted. Can you try speaking again? Yeah, can you hear me? Hello, can you hear me? Okay, yeah, perfect. I think today I see it. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, so yeah, thanks for joining the call. And then, yeah, please feel free to ask any question around that. I mean, the demo or quarters or some cloud native stuff. Uh, just a couple of things uh, maybe uh, you might have uh, interested uh, about uh, Quarkus native comparison. So people sometimes ask me around uh, when Red Hat support fully uh, the Quarkus native comparison based on GraalVM. So actually uh, we have a plan to support native comparison based on Mandrel project around the middle of October, actually next month. So Mandrel is down, uh, downstream project of GraalVM and then the Red Hat build that project uh, would be based on OpenJDK 11. So after the Red Hat build of Quarkus release 1.7 middle of October, you have a fully support of a native compilation as well as uh, the OpenJDK 11 uh, build uh, in bottom. All right, uh, it's pretty quiet, and which means uh, pretty good or well, pretty bad. Uh, I'm not sure about that, but yeah, I hopefully, I hope uh, this is a, yeah, I think it's, uh, you know, so I, I know, so there are more than 90% Java developer really love to Spring Boot or some even uh, some new Java stack. And actually I've been there more than 10 and 15 years. And the, this is really pretty awesome because the, we have a, a lots of customer success stories, uh, which means they reduce the code, number of codes. So for example, okay, we have a, a reduced 30% of the, the amount of the application Java codes, which means that we, uh, save a lot of time to develop and implement same application functionality with the Quarkus rather than uh, the other Java stack. And, and specifically in the COVID-19, and then we needed to work from home and we uh, try to find a more effective way or a productive way to have the same result, but still needed to provide the same business uh, functionality or capability with the same application. So maybe Corpus is a pretty good option to make that happen with the less Apple 
but will maximize your uh, result. So yeah, just briefly uh, subscribe my YouTube channel. There are a lot of corpus uh, demo as well as cloud native application or Ansible, or even Kubernetes stuff. And also you, you have some kind of technical issue or problem, you can add the question on my YouTube channel or my Twitter. Yeah, that's all I got. Oh, thank you again. I thought that was really good. Thanks. And